I graduated from the University of Florida in Gainesville in 1982, and to be honest, I was glad to be done. <laughs> Sorry, I never took much to life in a college town, and I wasn't one of those crazy Gator fans that the rest of the nation hates so much. Heck, the football team was pretty bad back then, and it wasn't the great source of pride it is now. Now, over the last X number of years, and you can do the math if you care to, I've come to appreciate my collegiate heritage a great deal more and become a pretty big fan of those Florida Gator football teams. My daughter's even got her heart set on attending UF. So how could I pass up the opportunity to give Kevin McCarthy this form to promote his new book, Historic Photos of University of Florida Football? No, I couldn't, obviously. So McCarthy has written 43 books, and he spent 33 years as a teacher of linguistics and writing at the school. Kevin, welcome to Mr. Media. Thank you very much, sir. How are you? Pretty good. It's nice down here in, in Florida, and we're having good weather and a little rain this afternoon. But football season is beginning, so people are beginning to get revved up. Something to live for once again in Gainesville. Yes, uh, usually in June and July it's quiet, but in August when the preseason practices begin and the, the tension starts to rev up a little bit, it gets exciting. <laughs> there's, I know in Gainesville there's football season, and then there's that time that comes between the, next, the end of one and the next football season. There's really only two seasons. Well, even, for example, during the spring practice, uh, hundreds of fans show up each afternoon to watch the Gators and, and see the, the new plays and the new faces. It gets to be a pretty exciting time. Then we have an orange and blue game, usually in April sometime, where the two the squads are split up into two parts and evenly distributed, and, and that's a good indication of what's going to come in the, follow, in the following season. Now, this is a, a fun idea for a book, and I know that the publisher does a number of these, but um, how did it come about for you? I've done several books about Florida Gators. I did one, for example, tracing the history of the Gators back to uh, the year late 1800s. And then I did a second book about the rivalry between the Gators and the Seminoles up in Tallahassee, and that came out about 10 years ago. The rivalry, of course, sparked an interest between the fans of the Gators and the Seminoles. But we also have the Gator Bulldogs and the Alabama Crimson Tide and the Auburn Tigers. So I thought I'd try to put together collection, a collection of pictures, photos, that go back to the 1800s, some of which have not been seen in decades. Hmm. They are. I mean, there's some remarkable pictures. And, and, and not all of them are absolute football shots. There's some that kind of set the tone for uh, uh, football at, at, at the school and, and, well, before it even became the University of Florida. Sure. Even, for example, in the choice of the mascot, unlike the Seminoles in Tallahassee, which chose a, a Native American, we chose an alligator, and that alligator has changed its form and ferocity over the years so that now we have not only a male alligator but also an Alberta the female alligator, which both of them lead the cheers on the sides of the games each year. Hmm. It's appropriate also, of course, that our stadium is called the Swamp. It's a nickname that Steve Spurrier gave to the stadium in the early 1990s as a place where alligators live and where they like to feast on things like bulldogs and tigers and <laughs> mascots from other schools. <laughs> You, uh, <laughs> I was just thinking, I, lo I love this. I, I, there, there's one joke I, I still remember well about uh, 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 why, the, uh, why does the St. John's River flow north instead of south? Well, yes, uh, I actually wrote a book about the St. John's River and included that in the front, but the, uh, <laughs> the publisher took it out. And the reason that the St. John's River flows north, as you know, is because Georgia sucks. <laughs> Thank you. You know, it's so much more authoritative coming from you than from wow. me. <laughs> it's that a gray funny. river, and it goes about 200-plus miles and uh, or toward beyond Jacksonville, right close to Georgia. <laughs> so. it's a, I, mean, do you ever, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I just never get tired of that joke. Yeah, it's good. Um, uh, tell me about some of your favorite, uh, and I do have the, the book in front of me. There was some question about that over the weekend, but I do have it. What, what is, tell me about some of your favorite photos that are in the book. I think, for example, the, the photos of the early years when the athletes had little to no equipment, where they might wear a nose guard, where, where some of them never wore helmets, 
until the 1920s and 30s, there was a bravado among the players that they would take no, no, uh, no, nobody as as a guest, and they would or a prisoner, and therefore they had a roughness about them that was pretty remarkable compared to the equipment that the athletes wear today. Hmm. I actually have not seen the the new copy of the book, so you're seeing something that I haven't seen other than in proofs. So you're way ahead of me. Well, the the the, the proof copy that you saw did it have the 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 uh, pictures of the topless cheerleaders at the back? No, I didn't see that. I look forward to seeing that. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, man with a good sense of humor. I like that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, ha- where did you find the photos that are in the book? There are archives at the University of Florida that have been pretty nicely kept, both in the athletic department and in the main library where the archives are. I also went to Tallahassee where the state archives are, and there are something like 50,000 photographs up there of all aspects of of Floridiana, including sports. I took a lot of pictures myself in the late 60s and early 70s when I came here. So uh, I have a a really good collection of photographs. Hmm. Now, I do have a slight bone to pick with you, and I I, I, I think I already know what the answer is, but uh, you're talking here about the, uh, the, the... the Gator football team, I think, won its first national championship in '96, and of course, it's won two more since then. Uh, but there's no, there's no pictures of the second and third. There's no pictures from that era. Uh, is are those not considered historic events? In a way, I mean, that's a good question. <laughs> They're not that historic, and also, to use pictures of modern players, you need all kinds of permission for example, from the athletic department and with uh, Tim Tebow coming up maybe for a second Heisman, there are so many restrictions on using images of modern players. It's much more difficult, if not impossible, to get that kind of permission. Huh. So anybody looking, like like they can't get enough pictures of Tim Tebow, but anybody expecting to see him in here, that's not going to happen. Right. Uh, Though if they come to Gainesville, they'll actually see a statue of Tim Tebow, a local restaurant near where I live, has erected a, a, a bigger than life size statue of Tim Tebow with his number 15 on and all. And people often get photographed by that statue, which is lit up at nighttime. So he's a <laughs> modern uh, deity in Gainesville. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Do you want to mention the restaurant? We might as well give him a plug. Well, it's Valley Who on West University Avenue. Hmm. And it, it's cute to see, and it's cute to see the youngsters go up to, to the statue and. Because Thibault was such a really good person that he he goes to different churches and sometimes says some words at the services on Sundays. He's a great model for youngsters, both boys and girls, in this town. Hmm. Did anyone ever erect a, a, a statue of a Spurrier? No. Uh, <laughs> though he could have had one, probably, but... When he left uh, after about 10 years here to go into the pros, it was quite a disappointment. And then when he decided to leave that and go eventually into South Carolina, for a while he was not welcome in Gainesville, but he's, he's a very gracious man and has come back to celebrate the anniversary of the 96 win, for example. And he and Danny Werfel have appeared together in different pictures. It's, and it's amazing how... Like it's amazing how Gator tastes uh, <laughs> can change so sure. much. Uh, yeah, and the Gator fans, like the fans of many teams, are sometimes fair weather fans. So that if we lose to a Mississippi or to a Troy State or something, or even to an Auburn or a Georgia, some of the fans will go into a funk for the next week in sadness. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh man, we're so fickle. Yes. Uh, I, well, and I was I was honest up front in my introduction when I said that. I, I mean, when I was there, it just it, the football team. It just wasn't a big deal, and and frankly, it was college to me. It wasn't, uh, you know, I, I wasn't I wasn't feeling part of some uh, huge life changing force. It was uh, I came from University of Miami where I was a freshman. I came to Florida, and well, it was college to me. It was you know I worked and uh, and I went I went to school and I you know I chased girls and. Uh, you know, when when I got that diploma, um, 
I was out of there. <laughs> but it was later that it, it really started meaning something to me. And now if you try to get, for example, a, a ticket to a home football game in Gainesville, it's basically impossible. Whereas back in the 50s and 60s, you could easily get a ticket. What interests me is the fanaticism of people for the Gators, people who have never gone to the University of Florida as students, but they live in the southeast and they realize how much the team means to the economy of Florida and to the sports fans of all over America, and they really have been quite generous to the university. So, for example, we're engaged now in a $1 billion fundraising campaign for the university as a whole. And the athletic department under Urban Meyer has been extremely generous at, in these difficult economic times, for example, in giving money for computers and helping to build an academic advising center for all the students try to, to try to show that the athletes are really students first and athletes second. Hmm. Um. What I mean, you now you went to school at um, uh, LaSalle, right? And, I left um, LaSalle, then I went to graduate school at the University of North Carolina. And there in Chapel Hill, you could go on a Saturday to a football game and put a coat and tie on and just walk up and get a ticket the day of the game. Mm-hmm. That, that was not true of basketball there, and it's not true of football here. I have a daughter, for example, who just graduated from the University of Central Florida in Orlando, and each fall when I would go down there to, to go to Parents' Day, and she and I would go to a University of Central Florida football game, the first time I went, I called up a week ahead of time and said, I want to reserve a ticket to the football game. And they said, why would you want to reserve a ticket? Just show up. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, I live in Gainesville, and that doesn't work in Gainesville. So that team, other teams, as they get better and better, the demand for tickets will be much higher, of course. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> so, um, well, let's talk some more about the photos here. Um, w- were you surprised by anything that you found in uh, in finding these uh, older old gems? One of the the funniest pictures I found was uh, when the Gators went up to Boston. I think in the late twenties, early thirties, to play the Boston College football team. And something you couldn't do today is. One of the cheerleaders took an alligator, a little alligator about four inches long, with him on the airplane up to Boston. And there's a wonderful picture of the cheerleader presenting it to a Boston College cheerleader who, with much apprehension, is looking at that alligator because you don't usually see alligators north of North Carolina, for example. That was (laughs) a fun picture. There's also a picture of uh, a couple of uh, lovely co-eds, with a, a lasso, lasso around. Yeah, uh, and that uh, that seemed to be a live alligator. We have for many years we had a live alligator in the middle of campus, a, right near Century Tower, a very large tower in the middle of campus. The alligator was in a pen, uh, a wire pen, and the night before big football games, fans from Auburn or LSU or Georgia or Tennessee would be somewhat inebriated and actually get into the pen with the alligator and sometimes <laughs> cut off the alligator's tail, which is a crazy thing to do, uh-huh. or paint the alligator in the school colors of their university. Until finally the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission took the gator out to a nearby lake and let him live in peace in the lake and rather than in the pen in the middle of campus. Hey, you know, I, I, this is not really connected to Gator football or photos, but I got to ask you, it's Gator lore. Um, have have any uh, uh, bricks been known to fall off of uh, Century Tower in recent no. years? I haven't been there in a while. No. Uh, if you want to describe what you're talking about, uh, you <laughs> may not know. But uh... <laughs> as as I recall. I think that I think the lore was that if any if a virgin ever graduated from the University of Florida, a brick would fall off Century Tower. Was that it? Yes, that's that's the uh, the, the uh, <laughs> story. Yes, but no no brick has fallen off quite a while. <laughs> yeah, quite 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 a while. Huh? A while. Um, <laughs> who uh, now? I don't think there was a Charlie Pell photo in here. Am I wrong? There should be a Charlie Pell photo uh, as he's standing on the sidelines. He. Uh, he had a troubled time when he came here. 
I remember the first time I met him was at a basketball game, and he was going through the stands meeting the fans before the football season began, and we thought this is a man who brings great enthusiasm and or a fervor to the whole system. And he really messed up. He, he didn't have to have those recruiting violations he did, and that put a real blight to the NCAA on the University of Florida. And we've suffered for a number of years after he left because of his violations. Mm. So, so he is in a pic. I see. I didn't. I didn't see him, but I, I, I'll take your word for it right now. Um, yes. He. Uh, he. He got. So wait a minute. So Charlie Pell is in the book, but there's no Tim Tebow. Something's wrong here. Right. Something's very wrong. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't think there's an Urban Meyer photo either. Is no, there? No, there's no Urban Meyer photo. No. No. All right, now, why isn't there an Urban Meyer photo? I, I guess I can kind of understand Tim Tebow, but um, I think because uh, because we wanted to. I wanted to cut off the the images around uh, the first championship, and people are much more familiar through the media of the modern eras in the last since the first championship. And Urban Meyer is in the daily papers, as is Tim Tebow and some and Brandon Spikes and some of the other athletes. But but I wanted to concentrate more on the early years. Okay. Well, I, I see. There's. Uh... <laughs> Four, uh, four uh, pictures of Spurrier as coach. I know there's a, a picture of him as a as a player. Of course, he won the Heisman. Um, uh, it, I, oh, and there's even a Galen Hall picture in here. Right, a oh really my. decent man. Yeah, yeah. Um, I used to teach for many years. I taught a course in each fall called Writing About Football, in which I would have my students write uh, every two weeks. They had to write. Uh, about 2,000 words and hand them in and so on. And I had Spurrier come in to talk to the, the students, and he, he was interesting to hear him talk as a player and as a coach and as a recruiter to my students, most of whom were not athletes, and they were able to grill him about uh, what his plans were for that coming season and so on. But he was a very influential, enthusiastic coach. You could tell the way you see him jumping around on the sidelines. Uh, Kevin, are you still teaching? No, I retired in 2005 from the university. I, I taught overseas. I was in Saudi Arabia for two years, in Lebanon for a year, and Turkey for two years. And now I go to Vietnam every two years to teach uh, in the spring. But I basically am, I write full-time now. And I write uh, books about histories of Florida, nearby cities, sports, and so on, things like that. You know, I, I I hadn't even thought about it. I I should have. I, I don't even know how I would look it up. I got to wondering if uh, if I had been in any of your classes when I was there. I was an English major and a, and, and had a independent study in film. I, I remember Julian Smith right. and uh, Childers. I'm thinking no. Children. John Check, Jim Haskins. John Check, yeah, I had John Check. Sure. Teaching. I taught. Check. Courses yeah. in writing and in linguistics and in English grammar. I used to have 300 students at a time in a course called English Grammar. I, used, hmm. I had Danny Werfel in one of my classes, for example, when that, he first was a sophomore. I, I I some, a, some, somewhere I'm going to go find my uh, my transcript okay. and see if I was in one of those. That sounds like I remember a lot of those 300 seat uh, classes. Right. So. <laughs> uh, interestingly, I had uh, over 10,000 students, and I re remember the very good and the very bad students. So uh, <laughs> if you were neither of those, I wouldn't have remembered. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, was, I was probably in the middle. Although I did, uh, I did have Harry Cruz for a couple of classes. And, the novel, uh, yeah, very famous. Yeah, novel. Harry was always interesting. I, I, I remember after the first time I had him in class, any time I'd... Uh, I pass him on campus. He would. He. It was very, a very an odd thing that he could do. He. He would recite back like a paragraph that he. He remembered from something I'd written. Wow. And he did that for a long time. And uh, I remember sense. interviewing him years later. And you know, it, he couldn't remember the paragraph. I was disappointed. But okay. you know, it was fun. It, it was fun while it lasted. Sure. I bet. Um, <laughs> now, what about what's the important about uh, the importance of Jacksonville and the Gator Bowl uh, to Gator football? Well, there's a good part and a bad part. The good part is that every year, almost every year for the last hundred years, the, the Bulldogs and the Gators meet in what's called neutral territory over in Jacksonville, usually in the first uh, weekend in November or at the end of October. The, the good part is also that it's a wonderful recruiting tool 
when athletes in South Georgia and North Florida see these two powerhouses play, it's a strong recruiting tool. Now, to me, the bad part is the amount of alcohol consumed or supposedly consumed. When CBS, for example, every year when they televise this, they talk about the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. I used to give a little speech in my classes uh, how angry that would make me because it, it besmirches both the University of Georgia and the University of Florida. There probably is a lot of drinking going on, but I just hate it when people associate uh, those two universities with alcohol. We have a president now who is leading a concerted effort to try to get to minimize the alcohol at athletic events, for example. Hmm. How's that working out? It's, it's going to work out much better than we thought because students have to take a pledge about not drinking, and there's much more intense lobbying in the fraternities to minimize the use of alcohol. In the fr- in the fraternities, I'm sorry, I'm still thinking yes, of animals. In the fraternities and the sororities, to try to to have less alcohol consumed, we don't allow it, of course, in any of the football games on campus. Mm-hmm. You, you can't bring any any umbrellas or even into the stadium because students used to put their umbrella handles, which were empty, full of alcohol <laughs> and drink it. So, <laughs> sorry, I mean I'm laughing. I, I don't even drink, and I'm I, I you know these stories always make me laugh. Um, yeah. Now, but, but back to Jacksonville, the bring, having a game there brings in a, an am- amazing amount of income to the city, and therefore the city is going to try to keep this there a long time. And I think we're going to re-sign the contract next year to have it there for more years. Now, um, another uh, important element of uh, Gator football is Mr. Two Bits. Uh, can you uh, tell folks who may not know uh, yes, there was, there was a, a man named George Edmondson from Tampa, Florida, who, gosh, about 50 years ago, as a student, was so annoyed at the lack of enthusiasm among the students for the game that he began to have his particular part of the stadium do a two-bits cheer. And then he got a little sign about the two-foot by one-foot sign that said two-bits, and eventually he was allowed to go out on, into the middle of the field and have each side do a two bits, four bits, or an orange and blue cheer. He has gone on to uh, somewhat become quite famous. He's in his, I think, 80s now, but he was the parade marshal in one of the homecoming parades. He also, each year, provides money for a scholarship to be given to a University of Florida cheerleader, most of whom never get much recognition, but he believes so strongly in school spirit that he donates money himself for the scholarship. Hmm. And uh, do I understand that he's officially retired now, that he's not going to participate this season? Yes, he is officially retired. I don't know if there will be a replacement. At this point, I don't think there will be. But from time to time, he does come back for big occasions and leads them. But, again, he's up in his 80s. Yeah, it's but he a, wears his yellow, a, bright yellow pants, and has a gator tie, and it's just fun to see him out in the middle of the field with his great enthusiasm. A much, much beloved uh, uh, yes character of Florida lore for for sure. Yes. Well, um, listen, I want to tell everybody that uh, they can find this uh, wonderful photo collection, uh, historic photos of University of Florida football. It's uh, it it will be in a few days, I, I believe, in great bookstores everywhere. Yes. Or you can order it uh, online at uh, mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com, or amazon.com. Okay. And right. uh, Kevin, it was a lot of fun talking to you. You My have a, a wonderful, wonderful right. sense of tolerance and humor. Well, can I say <laughs> go Gators on your show? No, no, I'm sorry. We don't allow we that. Can't you can't say that. Okay. <laughs> go ahead and say it, please. Be my guest. Go Gators. Go <laughs> <No> Gators. <laughs> and Kevin, thanks so much for my being pleasure. on the show today. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye now. And folks, for more interviews with uh, journalists and authors, you can surf over to our main website, www.mrmedia.com. That's where you can listen to my earlier conversations with A.J. Jacobs of Esquire, John Darton of The New York Times. 2009 Pulitzer Prize winner for features, Lane DeGregory, and many more. And please think about writing an online review of Mr. Media, casting a vote for Mr. Media, or remarking Mr. Media as one of your favorites, whether you listen on Blog Talk Radio, True Slant, Digital Journal, Vox, Podcast Pickle, Mediafly, Podfeed.net, 
uh, Blueberry Zenco, Zencast, Zimbio, or Odeo. Subscribe to Mr. Media on iTunes and you'll never miss a show. Just search Mr. Media Interviews from within iTunes and subscribe for free. Or subscribe to Mr. Media's blog on the Amazon Kindle Reader. You can also listen with a piece of string and a tin can in many locations. If you've got an idea for a guest, email me directly at bob at andelman.com. That's A-N-D-E-L-M-A-N. You can also follow me on Facebook or on Twitter, www.twitter.com slash andelman. Thanks so much for joining us today. Always appreciate when you give up a little piece of your day and spend it with us. <laughs>